Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is Rajesh Yadav and in today's interview, I am going to cover some more SAS interview questions and answers. Let's move on to the next slide. This is about my experience and my certifications. Let's move on to the next slide. So guys, if you are preparing for SAS interview, you can ask for SAS interview session. Let's move on to the next slide. So here is the first question, write a program to show one to many relationship. So here I have two tables, table one and table two. So table one contains only ID variable and three rows, whereas table two contains three rows and two columns. One is ID, another one is age. So what we want here is you to generate Cartesian product. So how you will generate the Cartesian product? Let's see the answer. So from SQL, select 1.id, 2.id as bid, comma age from 1, comma 2. Quit. So when you run this code, it will generate the Cartesian product of these two tables. So here if you can see, all rows of the first table will combine with all the rows of second table. So you can see 101 is combining with all the rows of table 2, 101, 101 and 104. So 101, 101, 104. And same 102 will combine with all rows of table 2, 101, 101, 104. So you can see one row is combining with all rows of the second. So it's one to many relationship it's showing. However, when we use joins, there is optimization happens. That's why we do not see all the combinations, only desired combinations we will see. So here you can see three rows and three rows here. So three into three is nine rows. So Cartesian product size is nine rows. I hope you are clear about this question. Let's move on to the next question. What is the engine for default SAS tables? So when you create a library for SAS tables, what engine you use? What do you specify? So when we will create a library for only SAS tables, we do not give any SAS engines because there is a default SAS engine that works. So what is this engine? Let's see the answer. So this engine is base. It's a default engine for SAS tables. That's why we do not need to specify it. Let's see an example. So when you create a library, you do not specify this BASE. Why? Because this is a default SAS engine to identify the SAS table. So you can omit this. So lib name, test, library reference, and this location it is pointing to, and base is the type. Let's see the another example. I use V9 this time. So what is this V9? V9 is nothing but just the alias of this base. So you can either write base or you can write V9. I hope this is clear. Let's move on to the next slide. What is the issue with below conversion of price variable to numeric? So here, what I'm using here, I have a data set item underscore data set and it contains two variable item purchased and price. So item purchase is shoe and price is 599. So you can see here, this variable is a character variable similar to this. So I just wanted to convert it into numeric. So I use this code data to set item underscore data set price in numeric input price 8.2. So we know that input function is used to convert character to numeric. So this variable I'm converting and then I have given in format as 8.2. Point 0.2 is for decimal width. So here you can see there is no decimal. Still I have given this 8.2. So that's why when I converted this, it has given me problem 5.99. So you may ask, okay, if we remove this dot 2, will it work fine? Yes, absolutely. The problem is with this decimal point. So in formats, when we specify this in formats creates this type of problem. So you should be aware about this. Okay. So here is the answer I have wrote the same that I have explained. So what you need to do is you can use below conversion. It will handle decimal part 2 or you can use best 32. So when I'm not clear, I generally use best 32 dot in format. It will handle both decimal or non-decimal numeric values. So I have rewrote the same code. So you can see this time I use input price and 8 dot and it has converted correctly. Okay, so you can use best 32 It most of the time best 32 works absolutely fine. So you can use this. I hope you are clear about this conversion and the issue with in formats. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay, here is the another question. If you are using keep or drop statement, then which phase it is decided that which column to be kept or deleted. So if you know the PDB concept, you will know that keep and drop statements are compile time statements. So obviously if these statements are compile time, so it will remove or keep the variable at compile time. So answer is compile phase. It sets the rule for PDV based on your code to which column to be kept or dropped. Let's move on to the next slide. That's it in this session guys. If you like this video, press the like button, subscribe this channel.
we will meet in the next session till the time bye and take care